In one version, we're outside when the locusts come, blatantly disobeying the order to shelter in place. At first, we mistake the sound for a military plane. They're so common these days, we've been trying to remember all the words to stay in alive. My name is Jem Brock. I'm a visual artist and a writer, currently living in Manitou Springs, though I'm originally from Illinois. There's not a whole lot to do there, uh, especially back then, it was kind of before the internet took off and I was a weird kid who didn't understand how to talk to other people. So I spent most of my childhood reading books, which is probably what's had the most profound impact on my life. Just like the way that I move through the world and the work that I make. I'm sure you can tell I'm a collector by nature, so I'm very drawn to books. Um, and not just like reading books, but part of the reason why I choose to buy the books that I buy is how well worn in they are, if they have writing inside, um, the cover designs on them. I'm more interested in vintage books because I feel like the covers are just more well designed than they are nowadays. Uh, I also really love records and cassette tapes, love VHS tapes and music cassettes and DVDs and things like that. I just, I like stuff. I like objects. I, I know it's kind of like not popular to like objects these days. Everyone's like a minimalist now and getting rid of all the stuff that doesn't spark joy or whatever, but I, I genuinely like stuff. I think that objects matter. I feel like I'm very interested in the tactile experience of making the physicality of the action of doing things. So the human touch and the evidence of the artist's hand is really important to me in all of the things that I make. I never want things to feel mass produced. I always want you to know that labor has gone into it. So I suppose that's probably where the strongest connection is, is like anything that you spend that much time manipulating with your hands, you end up like putting just a lot of energy into it, whether you're trying to like imbue it or not. It just takes energy to make, so it's already there. Almost all of my pieces focus on either tying knots or the act of writing, uh, which, you know, writing, it's like different from drawing or painting because you can never tell, like drawing and painting, they're not linear. You can see brush strokes and you can see pencil marks, but you don't know what order they're made in or why they're done the way they're done. But writing is always linear and tying a knot, you always, like, you always have the evidence of the bound thing. It's, you know, the knot is like, it, you see the energy in there because you know that it's taken it to tie it. Um, it also kind of has a big dependence on concept. Uh, so if I, like when I'm talking about beauty and ornamentation, it's probably better to use like a macrame knot or a Celtic knot or something like that. But if I'm talking more about repetition and like the utilitarian aspect, it's probably better to like use a fishing knot. Um, I just think that repetition is really liberating in a way because it allows your brain to just totally empty and you can get lost in the process. So it has that connection to mysticism like we were discussing earlier. This idea of like the surrender of the self to something higher, I suppose, is like where the connection to repetition comes from. Um, materials, well I was really focused on beauty when I was making that show and ornamentation, decoration, mostly because heirlooms, they're inheritance, but it's not monetary, it's an object. So it had to feel very object-like. And normally when you think of heirlooms, you think of stuff like, you know, like jewelry, antiques, baubles, essentially. Uh, so ornamentation and decoration was really important there. I wanted all the pieces to feel like something that belonged in a home, in a space that was very lived in that would look comfortable surrounded by clutter. So that's kind of like why I approached making those things the way that I did. I'm, I'm interested in the knot really. So that's probably why I most commonly do braids or macrame because it relies on knot tying. Cause the knot is, it has a lot, all of these ancient historical associations. It is commonly referred to as like a spiritual binding agent. That's why we have terms like hand fasting and tie the knot and like why knots are considered representative of relationships. Uh, you can use knots to tell the future, sometimes people think. Um, sailors would use knots really often to like keep track of where they were in space or to, you know, find things out about the weather and stuff like that. So there's all this impressions inside the tide knot and being interested in stories, I'm really interested in that. And then there's all, I just think like, not say something really interesting about humanity because it's pretty much like the oldest real tool that human beings have. You know, we had like sharpened sticks and stuff before knots, but the knot is a complex thing. So it's kind of this like symbol 
for the precise moment when humans developed this ability to manipulate things with our hands in a complex way. I love that wonderful ambiguity. Anything that kind of falls right in the middle of two points, I'm usually a big fan of. I think that's really cool. Uh, so now I'm trying to focus more on like, I don't know, just absorbing like the essence of the stories that kind of teach us how to move through the world instead of like why we're already in it.